Okay. Um, well, um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, um, wherever you are in the world. Um, thank you very much for joining me for this session. Um, I hope you learn a few things. Uh, please don't hesitate to ask me questions um, while I'm doing the presentation, although I'm not very good at multitasking, so I might struggle a little bit reading the, uh, the comments uh, on the side in the chat uh, as we go along. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, so this session today is about uh, increasing student engagement using conditional activities and budgets. Now, there's been quite a few um, there's been quite a few sessions on um, on gamification in this iMoot. Um, mine is somewhat low tech compared to um, compared to the other presentations. Um, so I, I hope that you still take something from it. So I just want to clarify: this session is not about open badges, uh, the new feature of Moodle 2.5. Okay, um, so the the idea of um, of what I've put together is creating a bunch of badges which are technically labels on a Moodle course, and for stu students uh, are able to unlock badges as they complete activities and view resources on on, uh, on my courses. Um, so here, for example, on the right-hand side, you've got a student with two badges. So they've completed a certain number of activities and they've used a certain number of resources. And the second student has, award, has been awarded four badges. So I want to clarify those are not actually badges. They're just hidden labels which, which get um, un, unhidden as students complete activities and resources. Okay. Um, the workflow that I'm going to show you today is fairly simple. Um, the first thing is to ask your administrator to enable the conditional activities and completion tra uh, tracking at site level. And the second thing is for you as a teacher to enable the completion tracking at course level. Um, then for each activity and resources uh, on your course, you need to set completion criteria. Then you need to create badges. And then you need to restrict access to badges based on the completion criteria for the activities and resources that you uh, selected before. And then you can uh, set up some Easter eggs to make the course a little bit more interesting. So um, let's take a look at um, the main features. Uh, first of all, it's, uh, keep in mind that it can only be used on uh, Moodle 2 sites. But it can be used on any Moodle 2 sites, so Moodle 2, Moodle 2.1, Moodle 2.2, and so on. You don't have to upgrade to Moodle 2.5, although it is compatible with Moodle 2.5 as well. Um, the system I'm using only uses core Moodle capabilities, so that means that uh, you don't have to download third-party plugins. Um, once you have gamified your course, uh, it's portable, so you can take it to your new school, and it doesn't matter if they don't, or your new organization, sorry. It doesn't matter if they don't have the newest version of Moodle. Um, the badges are not uh, tied to a user profile, and there are no real design limitations as to what the badges look like. As long as you can put it in a label, then it can be a badge. Um, so, for example, you could have video badges if you wanted to, um, or, you know, those animated GIFs, um, supposedly that's how it's supposed to say it. Uh, you, can, you can have those as well if you like. Um, you can easily tie it with uh, an existing reward system. Uh, for example, at, our, at my current school, we have a system uh, of chops and house points. So, um, for each student, uh, I just translate those as house points. And it's easy to add, remove, or modify badges even after they've been awarded. So if you've made a mistake, for example, you can always go back um, and it won't affect anything at all. Um, so, yeah, just uh, let's take a look at how it's done. So I'm going to try and share my screen. Please let me know if it's really slow or if it doesn't work properly. I'll try and go um, fairly slowly so that uh, we can all follow easily. So let's see. I can do that without breaking anything. Uh, 
sorry, it's a bit noisy in the background. Uh, I'm on my roof at the moment, um, and there's all sorts of birds and so on. I'm in Hong Kong, and it's fairly hot and humid today, so the, all the insects and birds have gone crazy. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, cool. I've just realized that I didn't share it properly, so I'm going to have to close it for a second. Right, sorry about that. Still learning with the big blue button. It's a great system, by the way. Uh, I'm just not very good at that sort of stuff. Bear with me for five seconds. Almost there. And to, to answer your question, I'm not sure whether penguins can lay Easter eggs, but bunnies can lay eggs, so. Hopefully. Right, we should be up and running now. Okay, so the first thing uh, that you need to do as an administrator, if you are an administrator, is to enable the completion tracking and conditional activities at site level. So for this, I'm going to click on site administration and then advanced features. So you need an admin account to do that. This is probably where technical problems will appear. Oh. So you need to scroll down to the bottom, and there are two things that you need to tick. The enable completion tracking and enable conditional access. Once you've done this, um, all of your courses can be, uh, all of the activities in every course can be tracked as long as it is switched on at a course level. So that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to go to a course, and we're going to enable the student progress or the completion tracking for, uh, for that course. So you need to edit the settings on the course. And it's somewhere near the bottom. Really like the new forms in Moodle 2.5. Enable completion tracking, yes. And then save the changes. So what this does is that for each uh, activity and resource in this course, uh, there will be a system that keeps track of what students have completed, what activities have, have viewed, uh, what resources. Now, what we need to do is um, I've got a bunch of resources and activities here. Uh, I'm going to turn on my editing. And I'm going to go through every resource and activity and set the completion criteria for those. So let's go and do the first page here. Hello, sorry about that. Um, now that you've enabled the completion tracking on your site, uh, there are a couple more things, a couple more options that you can see at the bottom of each um, resource and activity setting. That's the restriction, the access restriction, and the activity completion. We will deal with the restrict access a bit later in the presentation, so now I want to focus on activity completion. So here what I have is a page, okay? It's a HTML page, and I want to keep track of whether students have completed it or not. And I have two ways of doing this. I can say that students have to tick a box once they have viewed the page, and the other option that I have is to show it as completed whenever a student has met a specific criteria. This here, the list of criteria for the show activity as complete when conditions are met, is different depending on the activity or the resource that you have. And we'll see a few in this presentation. In case of the page, the only uh, condition that you may set is whether a student um, is required to view. So that means as soon as a student has viewed a particular page, it will be marked as completed. I'm going to go save and return to course. And save and return to course. 
And now we'll see that on the actual calls, the resource looks different, as that there is a box next to the resource. So here, for example, I have a box with a dashed line and a tick inside of it. The dashed line tells me that this is an activity that is marked complete uh, automatically, so the student doesn't have to do anything about it. The second thing I'm going to do um, is I'm going to do, well, I could do the same for every page, but it might take a little while, so uh, I'm just going to move on and uh, go to the glossary here, for example. And I'm going to show you the different options that you guys have here. Thank you, Greg. Um, so here, I'm going to go to the activity completion again. Um, and as you can see, if I decide to have the activity not complete when certain conditions are met, I now have three conditions. I have um, a condition whereby the student must view the activity, must receive a grade, or they must require an entry. So here I've got the glossary and I want students to write their own entries. So I'm going to say I want them to, um, to have two entries uh, and I want them to view the activity. Now obviously the, the, the activity view is sort of implied, so I could really just untick that. Here I can choose any and all, sorry, any and all combination that I want. Um, so I'm going to go and save return to course. So whenever a student adds two entries to this particular glossary, it will be marked as complete for them um, in the tick box here. Here I have a lesson, so let's take a look at the options that we've got here. I don't know if you can hear the wind, but I think the rain is coming. Hope it doesn't. Otherwise, it's going to be very loud. Right. So let's go and take a look at the options I have in the lesson. And let's go to the activity completion again. And here you can see that I have similar uh, options to what I had in the, um, in, with the glossary. So here I'm going to decide to have students to manually mark the activity as completed. The reason behind this is that uh, if I chose view, for example, the problem with that with the lesson, I find that as, you know, quite often you have different branches in your lesson and you have different pages. Now, as soon as the student has seen one page of one branch, uh, the, the activity would be marked as complete. Now, that's why I never use this particular option on its own for lessons. If anything, I use this one as well so that I make sure that they have, you know, answered some of the questions at least. But what I prefer doing for, for this particular thing here is to ask the students to manually mark the activity as completed. Now, we could think that, you know, students might tick it off and not actually do the activity. Uh, we might see later in the, um, in the presentation that this might not always be the case. Um, so, save and return to course. And I'll show you that the uh, tick box actually looks different uh, when the completion tracking criteria is different as well. So here you can see that the box looks different. By the way, these might look different depending on which, um, which theme you're using. Um, for example, I use a theme that was made by Mary Evans, I think, and the, the, um, the boxes are blue or green depending on whether they are automatically marked as completed or whether the students mark the activities completed. So here we've got another page, and here we have a database. So let's go and take a look at this. And then we'll take a look at the quizzes, and then I'll show you how to um, how to restrict access to specific parts of the uh, restrict access to uh, some of the activities and resources. Very sorry, it's slow. Right. So here, uh, this is a database where I want students to share their scratch creations, um, and here you can see again that you've got the similar to um, Two things. I wish there was another active, um, another sort of criteria here, uh, whereby I could ask students to upload a specific amount of uh, entries and also uh, a specific amount of comments. Uh, but at the moment, that's not that's not possible. So usually, I just mark it as completed manually as well. So here, what what I do is. 
sign a, somewhat of a contract, or the, the students sign somewhat of a contract with me, they, they're only allowed to mark a, an activity as complete or a, res, a resource as viewed when they have viewed it and understood it. So I could um, ask them a question at any time um, on a particular resource that they've viewed and they should feel comfortable answering the question. Um, so it's not really a, you know, don't instill fear in, in the students, but uh, they do know that at some point they might be held accountable for that, for that uh, tick that they've, that they've marked. Um, for the quizzes, I just want to show you something for the quizzes. The, the options are the same, but I just want to show you how you can cascade um, completion activities and turn it into conditional activities because we've not actually looked at this yet. So here, um, I'm going to say that the students can only mark it completed when certain conditions are met and when it is marked complete. So this one is the same as what we've seen before. But then I'm going to introduce uh, restrict access. That's a plane in the background. <laughs> I've got everything to know. Right, so let's go to my second quiz here, and I'm going to restrict it. Yeah, Greg, I think I'll be doing the same just before the holidays. I'm really excited about Moodle 2.5. This is just a test. Um, this is just a test site. Um, that's why it's a bit slow. But uh, it's so much better, so much easier to use. Just having the, the forms all collapsed like this just makes the whole thing look more simple. Um, and I think for first, first time users, um, it's a really good thing. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do that the same as uh, what I did for the first, the first quiz. And in the restrict access here, I'm going to restrict the access to quiz number two until um, someone got a specific grade. So let's say it must be at least 75% and less than 101% at um, quiz number one. So here what we've got is a student won't be able to access quiz number two unless they have got at least 75% and at most 100% in quiz number one. Now this is one of the conditions that can be used to have conditional activities. So what I mean by conditional activities is an activity or resource is not available to a student until they have met a specific criteria, a criterion or a list of criteria. So here is just one criteria. Okay. So here, once you have, um, sorry, once you have decided to limit access or to restrict access to this particular uh, activity, you can decide to either hide it entirely or to show it grayed out with the restriction information. So let's take a look at what this does. Go to the go back to my course. While this is loading, do, does anyone have any questions or any anything you'd like to share? Any tip maybe that uh, you know you've uh, learnt about when when using conditional activities? So here we have the activity grayed out, and the students will be able to see this message here. So they will see that there is indeed an activity, but they can't access it it will be grayed out until it get that 75% here. Yeah, Gavin, yeah, make sure the phone runs off agree. <laughs> um, Jane, as far as I know, uh, from Moodle 2.3, you can um, have conditional sections as well.
Uh, Bernadette, I've tried with 100%, but I'm not sure. I'm still on Moodle 2.2 at school, um, and I've, it didn't quite work. Uh, it wouldn't let me enter the enter it. Um, so I'm not I'm not quite sure. I'd have to try maybe with the newer version of Moodle. Maybe there's a problem with my installation. I'm not sure. Oh, I see. Okay, I've never done that. Okay, thanks, Bernadette. Just leaving it empty should work. Okay, great. I'll try that. Thanks for the thanks for the tip. Okay, so let's go, let's do the same thing for. Actually, we won't do for Scratch quiz number three. We all understand how this works. OK, so now we have a bunch of activities and resources uh, which have a completion uh, criteria attached to them. Now it's time for us to make our budget. Um, this. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some labels, say at the top of my course over here, whereby I'm going to hide them and I'm, I'm going to restrict the access until specific activities have been, have been completed by students. So I'm going to, go to add an activity resource and I'm going to, go to label. Okay. Add. While this is loading, um, to get my labels, I went to um, Open Pickout and I teach a bunch of um, young students, they're 11, 12 year olds, and they just love penguins for some reason. So um, I just used uh, some penguins for my labels, um, for my badges. So I went to collect a few, um, a few penguins from Open Clipart. If, if you don't know Open Clipart, it's really fantastic. It's a collection of uh, free images, and most of them are completely free of copyrights. Um, and most of them that are not free of copyrights are under Creative Commons. But I think the vast, vast majority is free of copyright. So that's really useful um, to use in your courses. Okay, let's go back to let's go back to the course. Here is my label. By the way, I absolutely love the new uh, the new editor. Um, so much cleaner. Now, for, for our purposes here, uh, I'm going to have to click on Show Editing Tools. But uh, quite often, you can just use it with, um, with the tools hidden. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and select uh, some of the pictures that I've, um, that I've got, so some of the penguins that I collected from the site earlier on. OK, I'm going to work on an image, I think. Put that somewhere on my desktop. So I'm going to go and collect it from there. Mm. Oh, do you know what? Actually, I'm on Moodle 2.5. I forgot. I'm just going to drag and drop um, my penguins on my course to create a label. Um, so at the moment, you can't really see it, but uh, my penguins are on my desktop. And I've just lost, I hope I didn't. Just lost something. Lost something I shouldn't have. Right. I cannot see anything anymore. I hope I didn't break anything. So let's hope that you can still hear me. I can't. I've completely lost the uh, the window where you guys are. So I'm going to drag my first penguin on, and I'm going to add image to course page. This is a fantastic thing in Moodle 2.5, and that's going to create a label for me. Hopefully, please bear with me for five seconds. I have to find you guys again. There you are. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, so this penguin is not going anywhere, unfortunately. Bound to happen at some point. Technical issue. <laughs> okay. 
to make sure there's going to be a break here. Try and troubleshoot, see what's going on. I'm going to have to close the session and start another one. Taking a little bit longer than I expected. The, the good thing, by the way, is that uh, everything that I'm showing you now um, is available on a YouTube video that I put together a few weeks ago. And I've put the link uh, to that video at the end of my presentation. And I'll make the slides available um, on on the iMOOC course. Now, my computer has gone completely berserk. The server, fortunately. Sacrifice a child according to, uh, according to my server. Right. I'm going to have to um, to show you my actual course that I'm using with students. Um, so if there are any students na student names, I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, and you'll actually see what the uh, the course looks like when um, when done. So this is my um, my school noodle. Okay, so this is the actual course. Let's take a look at the badges that I've put together. Um, so I've got 11 badges, I think. Um, and I'll show you how I've put together this one, the Neat Learner um, badge here. Let me just dock a few things so that we've got a bit more space. Okay. So here, I've got a bunch of, uh, bunch of pages, six pages here, uh, that I get students to, uh, to read when they start their, their course. Uh, I teach on a, a carousel system, so I teach six times the, the same thing over the course of the year, so I have time to, to make these things better. And for, quite often, for the, for the younger students, it's the first time they use a Mac computer. And so I have to get them to set up a few things like, you know, the right click on the mouse and, and things like this. Uh, Farhan, the, these are in Moodle 2.2. Um, okay, so I've got six pages here and there is a logical progression. So a student cannot access step number two unless, uh, until they've done step number one and, and, so, and so on. And once they, they've done step number six, then they unlock this badge here. Um, it's really not a difficult batch to unlock, but it's just for the students to understand that their course is gamified and that if they complete activities and resources on their Moodle course, then they will be awarded uh, specific batches. Okay. So let me show you how I did this. Um, I'm going to add a um, fake batch. So let me just go up. down here. I'm going to add a label. So this is Moodle 2.2, by the way. So yeah, so I'm going to go and add an image of a penguin that I got earlier on. So I can't do the drag and drop, the fancy drag and drop thing with Moodle 2.5. That failed on me. And on my desktop here, I'm going to go and get penguin number one. Actually, this penguin here. I'm going to choose it. And that's it. We go okay. Next to this, I'm going to call this uh, the iMoot badge. I'm going to change that to having two, for example, make it big and change the color where it pops out. And here the trick is to restrict the access. So, Farhan, you got that right. Um, all I need to do is to make sure that I have uh, some activities uh, completed. Now, you can't see all of the activities, so I'm going to have to scroll down. What I've made sure of is that I named my activities uh, following a certain 
naming convention so that they're easy to spot. Uh, and here I know that it's step number six. So as soon as students have marked step number six complete, then I can show the, um, the label. Now the problem I have at the moment is that the label would be shown grayed out with restriction information. Now I've found uh, doing it that actually students respond better if the badge is hidden entirely so that they don't know what they're going to unlock. I don't actually tell students uh, what badges there are to unlock and how to unlock them. They have to find that, uh, find that out on their own. Okay. Right. So here I have uh, my badge that I've just created. And as a teacher, I know that the badge won't be available to students until they have met a specific condition. So here the badge is attached to only one condition. But sometimes I have badges that are attached to more than one condition. Like here I've got the tutorial collector and I want students to watch those uh, video tutorials that I've put together that I've put in, uh, in pages, uh, HTML pages. But because they don't have to look at them in a specific order, then I can't just say, you know, unlock the badge until they've seen uh, tutorial 17. I have to make sure that I do it for every single tutorial. So what I did, and it takes a little bit of time, you know, it might take you an hour or so to put it together, is I've added the activity completion condition. You can add conditions to the form. You can add, as far as I know, as many as you, as you want, although it can become quite messy. Um, here I think I've got, say, like 15, for example. Um, and then I follow the same, the same system whereby to save and return the course. Uh, Richard. Yeah, Vinny, the, the list of activities can get huge. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly can. Uh, Richard, uh, you can assign names with the ID for you. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure about your question. Uh, I'm not sure what to answer there. Um, so here I've got 12 badges on different different things, you know, different conditions, um, all following the same sort of idea, but with different conditions. Another thing that I've done in this course is to add what I call Easter eggs. Now I'm not sure whether they are indeed Easter eggs or not, but I like to call them that. Is I've posted a lot of those guys around my course. I've got 20 of them, and they are linked to a file that is a, an orphaned activity. And whenever a student clicks on a penguin, whenever they see a penguin, they're supposed to click on it, they download another penguin. So I'm going to click on it. And that's just downloaded a file. Let me show you what it looks like. Um, where is the guy that I just downloaded? Here he is. So I've just downloaded number one. And there are scattered, there are 20 penguins scattered around the, scattered around the course. They are everywhere. They are in uh, quiz questions, they are in lessons, they are in HTML pages, uh, really everywhere. So the idea behind this was for students to visit as many, um, many activities and resources as possible. Now I was a little bit worried that some students would go on a bit of a Click and rampage, click and rampage, and you know, just not really pay attention to uh, to what they're doing. But so far, um, so far, there's not really been any any issue. Uh, maybe one or two students, but that's really not the norm. Um, so let me show you how I did this. Uh, so this uses um, orphaned activities. So if you're not familiar with orphaned activities, the idea is that you have a specific number of sections on your course that is viewable. At the moment, I have, um, so this is actually just the top section. So I've got section one here. And then I've got section two, which is called orphaned activities section. So this section is actually part of my course. But when a student visits the course, they are not able to see anything that's down here. So the idea behind this is that you can still access an activities, for example, this quiz number one here is accessible to a student if they click if they know the URL which is the which is the difference with a hidden activity 
A hidden activity is, again, the students can't see it, but even if they know the URL to that activity, they start typing it into their, um, into, their, into their web browser address bar like this. Even if they know how to do that, um, it, will, it won't let them see the activity. It won't let them view the activity, uh, whereas an opened activity will. I hope that makes sense. OK, uh, so what I did is I created 10 or 20 files, image files. Uh, and each of those files, let's take a look at them. Each of those files has a description. I'll tell you why that's use, uh, useful in a minute. And I've made them post download. So the reason why I've added the description, which is now shown on the course, is that I can link to where the actual penguin is. For example, this is not a good example. Um, let me find a better example. So for example, here, I've got number two here, um, my number two penguin. Because I've got 20 and they're all over the course, I've got to remember where they are. So with the description, I can find out where they are. So if I click on uh, the word here, that will take me to the page where that particular penguin is located. So if I scroll down, there he is. So if I click on this guy, download the penguin number two, I download, here he is. I like this one, the two guy. Um, so that's why I've, uh, I've added the descriptions here uh, so that I could click on them easily. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I think that's all I have to say. Okay, so dot, how do you find this? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, do you know, I was expecting to have to redo every single link um, and the only two links that I had to redo were the links that were in quiz questions. All of the other links um, backed up properly and restored properly in other courses. I've duplicated this course uh, six times now, uh, twice in December and twice in March, and I've not had a problem aside, um, you know, apart from those, um, those two links in the quiz questions. Uh, so I was really, really pleased with that. Um, so I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, I think I've got a, another five minutes, so I can do two things. Um, either I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to answer any questions that you may have, um, or I can talk about the experiment that I've been doing. Um, I've been using the same course, so the very course that you see here, and I have used it. I've used the gamified version, and I've duplicated the same course with a similar group of students and I've, I've used a non-gamified version um, and uh, I, you know I've been looking at the differences uh, I, put, I put that on my blog I know I've recognized some names and I know that some of you have commented on the blogs you may have read before um, yeah that's a good idea Richard yeah I didn't think about that that's a really good idea yeah. really good idea Uh, Lynn, I've not yet. Um, I've not yet. Uh, to be fair, it was just um, it just started as a bit of an experiment about a year and a half ago. Um, I think it was when Moodle 2 first first came out, and I just wanted to play with the conditional activities and see, you know, what cool uses we could make of it. Um, and you know, it sort of evolved from there. Um, I still think that I'm going to use it in Moodle 2.5 even with the open badges because this is a little bit less official than the open badges and I've got complete control over what I, what I want to do as a teacher. Um, whereas for the open badges you really have to, well from my understanding you have to link it to uh, competence of some, of some description whereas here you can still do it for a bit of fun uh, and it was just to increase engagement and uh, I think so far it's worked quite well. Um, so. I'm, I'm going to continue and, uh, and see how, how that pans out. Thanks for all the nice comments about the, uh, about the blog. I appreciate that uh, you find it useful. Richard, I 
Do you know, I think so, because every page in, the, in a book has a specific URL. So as long as you put the specific URL to a page, I think there shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought it was a question. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, you can do anything you like. Anything you like. That's a really good idea. As long as you have a URL to a specific, um, to a specific activity or resource, then you can, you can do it with no problem at all. You can use it in an orphaned activity. You know, I've not done anything fancy, but I know that uh, quite a few people um, use menus. They make like nice looking menus and use uh, the orphaned activities for that. I think I've done some of that actually here on my wheel, whereby uh, you can click and it takes you to an orphaned activity. Yes, Richard. Are there any um, any other comments or questions? Oops, sorry. Uh, anything that I'm that I might have said I was going to cover and then I just forgot. Uh, Sergio, the theme is called uh, Ardva Posted by Mary Evans. Thanks, Richard. Um, Mary, uh, she, I don't think she sleeps. Uh, whenever I'm on uh, Moodle.org, she's always there. She, um, she always answers posts and so on. Um, Two, what, what's not available any longer? The theme is not available any longer? Or... <laughs> yeah, she's one dedicated person. Uh, really good support. Um, I like her work. Um, I know Gareth has been around. I don't know if uh, Gareth is in the session today. Uh, he's done some fantastic work with themes as well. Um, really good stuff. Oh, hello everybody, it's uh, Julian here. I actually don't want to stop questions. I just want to make sure I got my uh, my official thank you in uh, before everybody started disappearing. Uh, again, it's great seeing so many people getting excited about the possibilities and, and again, seeing how without the need of badges, you know, in 2.5, that people are doing uh, similar elements and, and, and similar ideas. And again, and even identifying some of the shortfalls of, of the badge mentality. So. Uh, on behalf of the IMO team, uh, Frederick, thank you so much for presenting uh, and hanging out on the rooftop in Hong Kong with the bad weather on its way in. It's been a fantastic presentation. And so please keep asking questions. I don't want to stop that. I just want to say thank you before the boy disappeared. Yeah, thanks, Julian. Uh, the weather's got better, sunny now, so I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the opportunity of uh, presenting at the IMO. Um, I, I don't know if some of you um, came halfway through. Uh, the session. I'll be presenting the same thing again tomorrow morning, my time, uh, half six in the morning. Um, uh, hopefully, the session will be a bit better than this one, um, <laughs> with uh, less technical issues. <laughs> but please keep the the questions uh, going. Um, still available, no problem at all. Oh, I see too. Okay, that's a shame. Yeah, Dot, I agree with you. Um, I've not been able to see that many uh, sessions. Um, we've been really busy, but that's the whole point, isn't it? It's to see some great things and then start using it at work straight away. That's a really good idea. Um, if you want to switch on your microphone and uh, you know take part, please do so. Um, or do I need to switch it on for you? I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but I'm still here. Hey, thanks a lot, Susie. Really appreciate all the nice comments. Yeah, Natalie. Uh, yeah, uh, to be honest with you, they don't know that it's a, they don't know that it's a trial. So uh, you know, um, the. It's, it's a bit funny in my school. It seems as though classes of the same age don't seem to interact with one another, like, you know, tutor groups. Um, but um, I make sure that I give, this, give the same amount of praise and the same amount of rewards. So what I've done is uh, I've created a, a query and I look into the database. And even though um, 
the students in the control group don't see the badges, I have the ability to check whether they would have unlocked a badge. And I make sure that I provide them with the same amount of praise. And I let them know that it's because they have uh, completed specific activities. Um, but uh, so far, there isn't that big a difference uh, between the students who have uh, who are part of the gamified course and the non-gamified course. The students who are in the gamified course are definitely more engaged in terms of, you know, the amount of clicks that they do, the amount of comments, the quality of comments that they post. Um, they're basically a bit more caring about their learning. Um, in terms of the classroom environment, with these two groups, there hasn't been too much of a difference. Um, but, uh, you know, it's still not over. Uh, I'm about three or four weeks away from the end of the experiment. So there's, defi there's definitely a positive to gamify a course. Um, but uh, not as much as what I thought. Not as much as what I had um, observed in the past. I, I've never done this uh, in a control group. Uh, but please do go and take a look at my blog. Um, I think the link is over. Do I have a link? Yeah, it's at the bottom, the bottom right here. Um, there's quite a, a few things. Yes, yeah, Sergio, I like the birds as well. They've calmed down a bit now. Um, the weather is not as crazy as it was earlier on. <laughs> I'm not sure what noise the penguins make. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, the the response, Natalie, has, has been good, but like you said, it's there are so many factors in education. I mean, for example, you know, I've been I've been sick a couple of days. Uh, there is a, um, you know, there is a sort of school trip next next week. It's really difficult, and it's such a small experiment. But having said that, what the observation that you, you make in the classroom over a long period of time, I think it's 16 weeks. Um, you do get a feel for things, uh, but that's really difficult to turn it into numbers, isn't it? Yeah, Lynn, do you know what? I'd be really interested to see the, the reaction uh, from all, all the students. I mean, people have gone crazy on with the uh, with the badges, haven't they? Um, everyone wants badges, shares what they, what they have unlocked. And do you know what? I've not, I've not seen the same uh, the same excitement with students. I, I'm not quite sure why. Um, it's quite interesting. Yeah, true, Natalie. Um, especially in Hong Kong, um, especially the youngest students in in, uh, in my current school. The a lot of the students come from the uh, the local Hong Kong system where there is a little bit of rote learning, and uh, then they you know they sort of grow into an MYP school. Uh, where the learning is completely different, uh, the, the rewarding system is completely different. So again, like you said, there are so many factors, it's difficult to say for sure that something is working. Uh, and it's sometimes difficult to, you know, to make sure that the data is correct. Um, very interesting. Yeah, it's true. Uh, but then again, uh, Natalie, I think your point, the point that you're making is very true. Um, and the, the way that I've managed to get students back on track is that I've linked the system with the existing reward system at school, you know, whereby they get house points and then there is a house cup at the end of the, at the, end of the school year and that, that means a lot to the students. Um, and it's really good for the students who are academic and not so sporty, uh, because a lot of the house points are collected through sports, uh, you know, sports day and music and, and so on. But uh, some of the kids were a bit quieter. They, they managed to actually gain quite a lot of house points, and and yeah, I think it gets them excited in that way. Uh, no, I haven't. Done, um, I've kept this extremely, extremely low key. Um, what they could do, I suppose, is uh, what I could do is I could set up a certificate. 
for yeah, I could probably set up a, a certificate system that's tied to the tied to the badges. Um, but no, I've not I've not set up a backpack. That that's more like a like a formal thing for you know so, sort of 2.5. Uh, I'll see how it goes in the in the future. Um, yeah. yeah, thanks, Lynn. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I've not thought about that. Not sure giving coffee to twelve-year-olds is a good idea. Like, <laughs> thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Does anyone want to uh, take the mic to maybe share like something that you guys have done before, or do, do I need to award to to unlock the the mic for you, or is it done automatically? I'll try to, Natalie. Um, I think it's really important that, um, to reflect on what we do as teachers. Um, and although, you know, there's been many late nights for me to keep, you know, the blog going over the past ten weeks. Um, I really wish I could do this for every every single thing that I do. Um, but it just I just don't have the time. But uh, I will definitely do that for one thing a year. One thing a year that I do, I, I will reflect and uh, share it with the community. It's so in interesting to share ideas uh, and to get feedback and to get more ideas from people. Um, it's extremely invaluable. Um, and I just, wish, I just wish we could do it more often. Um, Fred, I'll accept your invitation to put my microphone on, but I noticed that yes. Gavin Henrik's just left the room. It was, I wanted to pick up on a, a topic that um, we started on yesterday. If you get a chance to watch my presentation yesterday, it, I think ours work well together because I wish I would have had time to do an actual demonstration and I decided to go more for the philosophy and theories behind gamification. So that's, these two together make a really good resource. And the topic that Gavin and Farhan was there as well, perhaps um, he remembers, we were starting to talk about being able to track activity in Moodle courses and give learners instant granular feedback on their pro progress and Google Analytics was being discussed and that's something that you've used within your courses to report. Are you familiar with Gavin's plugin for Google Analytics in Moodle? Um, I'm familiar with Gavin. I didn't think it was his uh, plugin. I thought it was Bass. Is, is it his plugin? Yeah, sorry, it is Bass. Yeah, I think they presented together about it. It, yeah, Baz has uh, um, got the video about it. Is that the one you're yeah, using? Um, yes, yes it is. It was really easy to set up, like stupidly easy to set up. Um, I, I was planning on uh, making a really short YouTube video showing how to put it together. It takes, you know, a couple of minutes to put it together. Um, yeah. Google Analytics has been really interesting, um, but it's not been as powerful as I expected it to be. Uh, in terms of filtering, for example, maybe it is possible, mind you. You know, maybe I'm not very good uh, with Google and, uh, Analytics, but uh, for example, I wanted to see the path that the students have used to get into my courses. And although there is a way to to filter, I I, I find that the filtering uh, options are not good enough, and it doesn't just keep the students that that visited a specific page. Maybe there is a way to do it, and I'm just not good enough. I'm not sure. But apart from that, the plugin is fantastic. Um, I'll see if I can quickly even... find yes. some of the comments that Gavin put in there yesterday. He's mentioning something about this. You can create your own gradebook, custom gradebook events to have them recorded. Okay. Um, I must say I didn't manage to, I think I've only managed to look at two presentations this, this iMOOC, so I'll have a lot of catching up to do. Um, and Gavin's presentation of, um, is definitely something that I'd like to, that I'd like to view. Um, so if you, if, you, if you could take a look, that'd be great. Oh, there. So I just pasted what Gavin put in yesterday where there's three parameters that you can use for the analytics query, and it didn't really make a lot of sense to me, so I was hoping somebody could explain how that can be used to track what people are, are 
are doing. Okay, I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I'd have to. I'd have to take a look. Um, I'd have to take a look at this session. Um, so I can't really answer this question right now. To be honest with you, what I did with this plugin, with that plugin, was to just copy and paste the, the bunch of code that they gave me, put it in my theme, and then just change the um, the ID. You know, the Google uh, the Google ID. So I didn't really look at the at the code. Um, yeah. And would you mind putting a link to that plugin? Because I was looking for it last night. I'm not sure if I found the right one. Sure. Uh, just a second. I think I've got it on my on my blog. I'm not sure. Let me just uh, take that out. It was certainly an interesting interesting exercise to use uh, to use that plugin because. There's so much. I've realised that there is so much that can be done uh, in terms of what the students are actually doing on the site that we're not. Even though we've got good logs and things like that on the on, it's difficult to have a visual representation of what's actually going on. Um, and in me, in me trying to apply these gamification ideas to to our online courses, I've realised that the teacher is the is the judge who gives the student the feedback. And that means that the process of feedback is delayed because once a student does something, they have to wait until the, the teacher has the time to mark it. And that takes away that whole game feeling because in a game, you get instant feedback and it's the time and the speed that's involved as well as a systemic problem that we as teachers put ourselves in the role of judges. So I'm trying to think of ways to get around that time problem. And self-assessment came in as an answer. if. If you're dealing with students, I gave them a lot of um, tick boxes that they can assess themselves. Have you done this? Can you do that? And then they get that positive feedback really quickly. That might be fake, but I, I think it still has value. And that's where I'm hoping that Google Analytics um, will somehow be able to give a feedback loop quicker. Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a good idea. Um, sometimes I use for self-assessment, I use the, uh, the checklist um, and have a condition. Uh, based on that as well, you know, like uh, you know, I can do this, I can do that, I can do that, and yeah. students tend they tend to take it quite seriously because they don't see it as a checklist; they see it as a you know, oh, so what do I know? What is it that I don't really know? Uh, yeah. But I'm not sure we'd get the kind of feedback that that you're expecting. But we could tie that to a specific batch, for example. That's something that can be done, I guess. Yeah, end up giving them points if they ticked certain boxes and then said there's an additional point available if you can show your teacher a portfolio that now proves everything that you just said you can do. So then it meets auditing requirements but still gives students that feeling that they've completed and done something well. Mm. Yeah, no, that's definitely something. I've just um, pasted the uh, link to, uh, to Bas's uh, blog where he shares the code. Um, and there is a quick explanation as to how to install it on, uh, on your Moodle. Thank you. But uh, I'm, I'm happy to put together a quick, you know, YouTube video, not very polished, just showing you how to do it. That's not a problem. We've got a LinkedIn group that a lot of people have joined. I don't know if you've come across it. It's called Moodle for Motivation, and we're sharing a lot of these links and resources and ideas, so you're welcome to jump in there and um, if you've got a new blog post or some other information, there's I think there's about nearly 100 people there that are interested in this topic. We'd love to okay. have your, yeah, your sign, input. Sign up for that. Cool, excellent. Um, I've just been told by uh, the <laughs> wife that uh, I need, I need to go. <laughs> um, I think the baby is starting well, to, to, the to get restless a little bit. Um, <laughs> so it, it's been really good. Thank you very much uh, to, you know, for taking the time to uh, pop by and you know, take the mic and um, all the great questions that I've been asked and all the really good comments. I really appreciate it. Um, so have a great Sunday, wherever you are. If there is a bit of Sunday left. And, uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll catch, catch up later. Okay, bye for now.